how was Tony the Thrace and what similarities or differences do you see between Tony and Haley's debut in the truck series? Well, I guess I'll take the first part of that question first. I think it was phenomenal for Tony Brodinger. And I think that, you know, one of the big differences is everybody, uh, you know, really had a lot of expectations for Haley based on what she'd accomplished uh, in what in k and West, what's now uh, the Arkham Menard Series West and the Arkham Menard Series uh, National Tour in 2020. Whereas we talked about on this show, Tony Brininger, um has, you know, let, let's just call it what it is. She struggled quite a bit uh, with Venturini compared to her teammates in the Arkham Menard Series the last couple of years. And I think that with that in mind, I think people were keeping their expectations in check here, not necessarily expecting, you know, a, a top 10 run or anything like that. Just the goal for Tony, like we said a couple of weeks ago on the show, just needed to be bring the truck home in one piece, log as many laps as you can and gain all the experience you can. And she went out and I think did even more than that to get a top 15 finish, the best for a female driver on her debut in the truck series, uh, broke one of that's That was Haley's record with 16th a uh, c- couple of years ago here at Kansas. Um, you know, and, and it would have been a lead lap finish as well uh, if the race had been just uh, a few laps shorter. So she did uh, everything she needed to do, I think, to prove that this was a good opportunity for her to, to gain some experience for a driver who had never raced a truck before to go out and do that, I think is, is absolutely a success. And I think it shows that Tony uh, should maybe get another opportunity to do uh, some more truck series races later this year. If uh, such an opportunity comes together, we'll have to wait and see if anything gets announced. But, uh, you know, you bring up uh, moving up through the field, Joe, I think one of the important things to remember is Haley made her debut in 2020 uh, in the fall when we were still thoroughly in uh, the pandemic restrictions era. So there was no qualifying it being Haley's debut with the metrics. She would have had to start uh, well on the back. So that really would have disadvantaged her. Uh, I'm not sure where she would have qualified if we had had time trials that day. I'd assume she would have been a little bit further up the field. Granted she was in uh, some, some solid equipment, but it was her debut. So who knows what would have happened there. Uh, but she certainly had a tougher hill to climb on that day based on where Tony started on the field uh, this past weekend at Kansas. So, uh, again, a lot of similarities, obviously the same track and uh, I guess by extension, the same team, even though they're now under a different name with a different manufacturer. Uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, t- Tony has a lot to be proud of, uh, just as Haley did uh, on that day in 2020 as well. I think this is really something to build on and can maybe even be a confidence boost for her going back uh, to the Arkham Menard series. And then later this year, uh, the GR Cup, whatever else she's doing in 2023, this is a great run. Yeah, very great run, and I have to agree with you. You really can't compare the two of their debuts just because of all the different circumstances, the pandemic, no qualifying, as you mentioned. On paper, it looks like the same team to just switch manufacturer, but there's been a lot of changes from 2020 to 2023. We'll bring Daniel in for this part of the conversation. Now, Daniel, some have said drivers seem to do better in different series compared to other series. I know after this race, some of us were talking in our own chat with our grid network colleagues about how it seems like maybe Tony just seems a bit better suited in the truck series car I mean, truck compared to the Arkham and our series car. Haley Deegan, as we mentioned, you know, she made the switch from it was then the K and N series of the Arca, then the truck series. Do you believe that's the case? And Daniel, are there some cases in Europe where a driver may underperform at one level and then take a next step up and then all of a sudden that car just seems to better suit the character and they just seem to drive a lot better? I think this is something that happens uh, all the time. Um, and if, to some extent also happened to, to Deegan as well when she went from, from the uh, last, last year, towards the end of last year, uh, from the, uh, the truck to the Xfinity. Racing in, uh, you know, making her Xfinity debut when she was straight, uh, straight in pace and uh, and was very competitive. And uh, I think there are some categories before a multitude of reasons uh, when you, uh, you, you you kind of struggle. Um, could be the, the car, could be the team, could be the, the series itself. And then you step up, and on paper it should be uh, much harder. And then you actually uh, find something, and you're more competitive. I think uh, also of, of many drivers in Formula in FIA Formula Three and uh, FIA Formula Two, for example, uh, they they, uh, they they can some, somehow the Formula Three is really tough. They make the jump up to Formula Two, 
and and uh, you know everyone is saying yeah but maybe they have not uh, proven yet in a formula 3 level and and uh, somehow they they managed to go to uh, to be up front in in formula 2 um i'm, I'm for example Drugo, felipe drugovic uh he was not nowhere to be found at, at the front of the, the formula 3 grid uh he went to formula 2 and uh you know nobody would have really expected him to 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 do well and uh and he, he won races and uh you know in, in in formula 2 so and and won the championship of course so i, I would say that um it, it happens all the time and uh it's it's not uh, you know there are many factors in motorsport so um, somehow it, it, it just works out and, uh, and hopefully for, for Tony, uh, it's, it's one of those cases. Yeah. Daniel, that's a great example as well with, uh, Deegan last year, making her Xfinity debut, uh, Las Vegas coming home 13th. I think that again was a very similar situation. This was a driver that had struggled, uh, for the most part in the truck series. And people were saying, maybe this is a step too far too quickly, but she went out and, uh, ran all the laps and came home with a very, very solid finish and, Again, we'll, we'll see, you know, what Haley's future plans are. Obviously, she's focused on trucks primarily this year, but I'm sure if the opportunity came up to do another Xfinity starter too, she would certainly be open to that opportunity. Um, but again, you know, you can't say enough about the job that, that Tony Brodinger did uh, this past weekend at Kansas. I mean, this is a, a truck series field with past champions such as Matt Crafton, Ben Rhodes, Zane Smith on uh, the field. You had two cub drivers in this race as well, Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain. You had seasoned veterans. You had a uh, very highly rated Young prospects trying to work their way up. So this is a very, very tough series uh, to compete in. And to come home with a top 15 again is absolutely fantastic for Tony Brodinger. Yeah, what a fantastic debut. Definitely has to build that confidence and especially potential of maybe more truck series races in the future.